to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the April 11th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Shelley Bueller, and I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the commission, alongside Commissioner Bob Archer and Commissioner Kevin Cook. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item is item one, proclamations, presentations, uh, recognition of Capital Federal as title sponsor of the Spirit of Kansas, uh, Parks and Recreation. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a background, uh, I know we have two new commissioners that haven't been through this before. Uh, Capital Federal and uh, John Dykus is here today too, uh, and would probably like to say a few words. The, uh, uh, the the Shawnee County Parks and Rec has done the Spirit of Kansas for many many years. Back in 2002, uh, the, uh, there were some, some financial issues, and we were in danger of not having the Spirit of Kansas, and that's one of the. Uh, been the community's most popular event year after year after year. Uh, in fact, we wouldn't have this event if it wasn't for Capital Federal that stepped up, took on the uh, paying for the fireworks, and uh, since then we've continued to grow the event to, to continue to be one of the most popular ones in the community. With that, I'd like to invite John to, John to come up here. With him is Mary Lenz. Commissioners, on behalf of Capital Federal and our foundation, as John said, uh, we've been doing this uh, since 2002, which uh, this will be the 12th year that we have funded or partnered with the uh, Shawnee County Parks and Rec for the Spirit of Kansas and the fireworks display. And if you think back to 2002, Mary and I were talking about that on our way over, that uh, uh, you had in the events the year before were the 9-11, and to think that uh, the year after that we would not have the fireworks and the celebration yeah, we decided to partner with Shawnee County Parks and Rec, and it's been something that, as John said, has been a joy every year since yeah, to be able to partner and to help out with the spirit of Kansas and the fireworks. And once again, yeah, as some have commented, the checks have gotten smaller, and I said that's because you ask for more dollars every year. So we're trying to oblige and not spend it all on these uh, small checks, but yeah, again, we're proud to present uh, $25,000 uh, to the Shawnee County Parks and Recs for the Spirit of Kansas fireworks display this year. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. okay. well, certainly, thank you. You're very welcome. So much, and I always look forward to doing the commercial. <laughs> I didn't know whether you're going to pop, pop, pan it off on one of the new guys this year. And, uh, it's always entertaining to see how we get that done. Yes, you know. yes, it, it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Consent agenda. Are there questions or a motion on the consent agenda? I do not have any questions. I don't either, so I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. A motion to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item 4, new business. A County Clerk number 1, consider all voucher payments. Uh, Madam Chair, we have two sets of voucher payments this morning, one dated April 5th, 2013, in the amount of $384,086.20, and the second is dated April 10th, 2013, in the amount of $1,019,039.08, and I'll have a few questions about uh, the vouchers when it's appropriate. I, would no, I don't have actually questions this time. Okay, okay. There was a motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Yes. Uh, second I'll second. By Commissioner Cook, but questions? Yes, this thank point? you. And this is uh, from the Federally Qualified Health Plan. It's Alice or Allison? Off of which uh, the fourth. I'm five, sorry, uh, the uh, April 5th. Okay. Commissioner, Good morning, Allison. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, first was we had payments to CDW Government, Inc. in the amount of $4,163.04. Uh, 
Could you explain that? Sure. Um, excuse my voice. Um, what the, the EHS system, the electronic medical record for the community health center, was having some problems freezing up. And so through IT talking with that company, it was decided that they needed some additional um, storage space. And so that is what they did. The purchase was made in conjunction with IT through the state contract. So this is memory storage? Correct. It, and also we had uh, vouchers in the amount of 3564.79 to Success EHS, Inc. I, I believe those were their monthly maintenance fees. And what is that for specifically? I couldn't go into that detail. All I know is that it's a monthly maintenance fee. We'd have to wait for Alice to get back on that. Okay. Would you ask for that? Certainly. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Allison. That's all I know. Do you have any amendments? Do you want to hold no. the one? No. I'll no, hold. that's fine. I just wanted to uh, explain. Okay. That's okay, okay, Madam Chair. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item A2, consider correction orders. Move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item B, Treasurer number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C222-2013 with Jayhawk File Express LLC for secure shredding services at an estimated cost of $3,431.60. Good morning, Commissioners. Very much. I'm my Treasurer. Good morning, Larry. <coughs> this is just a continuation of a resolution that you approved uh, a couple of weeks ago to shred old documents. Uh, it's for $3,431.60. That kind of reads like we know precisely what that's going to cost, so I want to explain uh, what we're really looking at here. We're using the state contract, and it's based on the actual boxes picked up and the weight of those boxes, so we won't know the final price until the shredding is actually done. Um, I would anticipate that it will not exceed 3431 uh, for two reasons. Uh, there are two components to this. First, the number of boxes which I can control. So uh, my commitment to you is that we will not exceed the uh, 1,000 boxes that we've estimated. So I think that's a pretty darn good estimate, much better than my original 800. And it's uh, also based on weight, and that assumes that each box is fully loaded and uh, to the maximum, which is probably unlikely. So I think that I'll have a pretty good handle on uh, not exceeding 3431 and then we'll be billed the actual amount. I'm glad to answer the questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there questions? <coughs> no. I'll move approval of the contract. Is there second. Second. second? second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item C, County Counselor. Number one, consider approval of claim of uh, State Farm Insurance on behalf of its insured, Cynthia Phoenix, in an amount of $6,207.93 for damage to a vehicle. Good morning, Commissioners. Jonathan Brazon, Assistant County Counselor. Um, for the reasons set forth in my memorandum, there is a uh, recommendation to deny the claim. We have to answer any questions if you have them. Motion to deny the claim. Second. There's a motion to deny by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. Uh, I will ask at this time if anyone in the audience uh, wants to come forward to offer any comments. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, John. Item D, elections. Number one, consider approval of request to advertise and fill a vacant assistant election systems uh, specialist and a vacant, vacant voter services assistant position at a cost of $35,880 per position plus associated benefit costs. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have two positions in the office. You know, since I took uh, the appointment last September, We've had two positions that were not filled, and we chose not to fill them so we could focus on the work at hand. But since we've passed the major elections issues, we do need to fill those positions. Uh, the voter, uh, the election system specialist uh, position has been filled, but in doing so, we've taken a person from another position in the office, so we need to fill that one. And the other one is the voter services assistant position that also needs to be filled. 
Um, both of these are in the current budget. Like I said, we've been using some uh, some uh, temporary help, some contracts, and things to help fill in as needed to get us through uh, the elections process. But we need to fill those positions, so we're requesting your permission to, to proceed with that. Um, again, my name is Andrew Howell, uh, Shawnee County Elections Commissioner, <laughs> and uh, not used to saying that up here. So <laughs> I'll uh, try to remember to say that, but also just asking your permission for proceeding with that. Thank you. Move to approve. Question. Motion to approve by Commissioner Cook and second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thanks. Thanks. Item E, Human Resources, number one. Consider approval of the addition of up to eight hours of vacation to be added to non-exempt employees that worked on February 21st, 2013. Snow date. Good morning, Commissioner John. I'm going to prepare this request. Uh, to add um, up to eight hours of vacation accrual to all non exempt employees that actually worked on that uh, day. And I've conducted the meet and confer, and all those that approved it, required meet and confers, and all that approved it are included here in this memo. If you have a question, I'd be more than happy to ask. Answer any questions. Well, Commissioner Archer. Oh, no, after you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there is one bargaining unit that did not <clears throat> come to terms with this agreement, correct? Yes, sir. And that would be the Fraternal Order of Police. Yes, sir. Is there a way to have that extended to them even though they are – can you force it upon them to uh, add it to their – even though they may not have ex came to an agreement with what the terms were? Um, the main confer is required. Um, I think I'd probably have to do a little more research on whether I – I don't know that I can force that on them. Um, the county counselor is shaking his head now, so I, I, yeah. <clears throat> I don't believe we could do that because it is a contractual term. And the only reason I ask is I know that when it comes to certain terms of their contract, we have a final say. They can, even though there may not be an agreement between the parties, we have a final say mm -hmm. as to certain parts of their contract. But that's through the pure statute that we do that. That's a process set out by that. Statute. That's how we do. You know, we, I think what you're referring to is the issue of a lot of contract, and there are certain procedures that we have to go through for that process. Um, I guess in the final analysis, since we're at, at impasse, if that would ever come to pass, come on the uh, agenda, we, you could probably do it at that time. But that's not going to happen for a while. Okay. And that answers the questions I had. Okay, Commissioner Archer. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Uh, that it it does apply to all except the FOP and all non-exempt. Right. I'll make sure we understand right. that it's non-exempt okay. employees. But everyone except the FOP. That is correct. And you know, sometimes you just got to shake your head in wonderment. Uh, but I'll make a motion to approve. A motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. I'll, I'll second the motion. But I do have a question. Did they give any reason why? They, they had a counter offer, um, and we were not interested in a counter offer. We said this is what you wanted to do. Okay. Before we take a vote, is there anybody from the Fraternal Order of Police that wants to speak as to why? Point. If you do at this time, you could come to the podium and express your comments. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item F, Public Works Solid Place, number one. Consider approval of request for a sole source emergency purchase of a hydraulic valve and hardware to install it on a side mount mower in the amount of $2,368.93. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Block, Public Works and Solid Waste. This is a Public Works um, item, and I bring this one before you. Uh, for a certain reason on this particular one, we have uh, mowers that we have also have, uh, excuse me, tractors that we have mower attachments um, that we do all our mowing of ditches with. And usually when we buy these, we usually buy the mower and the tractor at the same time. Uh, we, had, uh, our, we had made a request to have some work done on a valve that controls the, uh, the mower portion of that unit. And and subsequent to that, we also made a request to uh, put in a, uh, a reservoir for some washer fluid for that tractor. 
individually, those both of those items weren't over the $1,500 threshold for the to come before the, or as far as the purchasing policy is concerned. But the company that does the work um, and is is the only local John Deere dealer in, in town to do the work did the did the work at the same time, which then put both of those separate work orders over the $1,500 threshold. So. Originally, we were going to have them do them separately. They ended up doing them together, so that's why I'm bringing them this forward to you today is because when they did them both together, it put us over the $1,500 threshold. So in order, to, um, in order to try to prevent any confusion later on, this is for you today to, to get the approval. Thanks, so if there's any questions regarding that, I'd be happy to try to answer them. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, is your working as the Department of, for Public Works and also with the solid waste, are you finding more and more that that $1,500 threshold is something that you go over a lot or yes. finding it more frequently? Yes. Yes, we are. I mean, nowadays, I'm not sure when that, that purchasing policy was originally adopted. I think it was... I think at least, well, it's been, it's been in place as long as I've been here, and I think it was in place long before I came here. So I'd say at least at least a decade, I think, or maybe even 20 years. So, um, so yes, I would say $1,500 is, is a pretty small amount, and we go over it often. And we have, we have several of these sole source emergency purchase forms uh, coming forward. Okay, and that's, that's just, if this was going to be a reoccurring, yeah. and I've noticed it before in the past. Well, right. and... and there has been some discussion about changes in the purchasing resolution. Uh, the former uh, purchasing director worked on it, and our new purchasing director who comes on board on Monday. Uh, I, I think that something will be coming before us, and there might be some changes in those amounts. I, I know that's been discussed, but... Mm. Yeah, I know um, before our, our, our former um, uh, uh -huh. auto finance director, she was she actually had a draft, I believe, developed, uh, I think, she left before it was ever right. brought forward to the commission yeah. for consideration. Uh, finance, I said purchasing, but uh, financial <laughs> administrator, yeah. Good. Okay. Thank all you. Right. That was all the questions I had regarding you. Ms. Purple, the request. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item E2, consider approval uh, to award bid to Wildcat Concrete Services, Inc. for the repair of the bridge and approach road, roadway on Northwest 46th Street over the, uh, uh, the UP, uh, UP Railroad and the Big Soldier Creek for $39,812 and authorization and execution of contract C-223-2013 for same. Uh, commissioners, this is in follow-up to an item that was presented to the commission uh, a couple months ago. Um, to repair this uh, this uh, bridge up on 46th Street, we got the design done. As mentioned here, we went out for bids. Uh, the lowest bid was submitted by Wildcat Concrete Services Incorporated for the amount of $39,812. Um, the funding for this would come from our special uh, bridge fund, and we don't anticipate any detrimental budgetary implications as a, as a result of awarding this uh, contract. So if there's any questions regarding this, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Tom. Questions? No. There's, there's motions to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item F3, consider approval to award bid downing sales and service for 22 cubic yard commercial containers, 15 3 cubic yard commercial containers, 4 8 uh, cubic yard commercial containers, and freight costs in the total amount of $22,689. Uh, commissioners, this also is a follow up to a, a prior memo that was submitted to the Commission to allow us to go out for bids for these commercial containers, and this is on the solid waste side. Uh, we did take uh, the bids, and the lowest bid was submitted by Downing Sales and Service in the amount of $22,689. The funding for this request would come from the Solid Waste Collections Fund, and it is our recommendation that the uh, bid be awarded to uh, Downing Sales. If there's any questions on this one, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Great. Thank you, Tom. Other questions? Follow-up questions? 
Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Sir. Thanks. Item G, corrections. Number one, consider approval of request for a sole source purchase of a subscription to the Topeka Capital Journal for placement in all inmate housing units with payment of $5,555.88 from the Inmate Benefit Fund, their commissary fund. Good morning, Commissioner Frank Cole, Department of Corrections. This is just a request to purchase that we've done for the last several years uh, for the inmates to purchase uh, the uh, newspaper to have it and it comes out of their, their account they pay for. It's no cost out of their budget. So this comes out of the inmate canteen? Yes, sir. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thanks, Brian. Item H, Parks and Recreation. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C224-2013 with the Topeka Swim Association for the use of the Bladesdale Family Aquatic Center for swim practices and one swim meet to be held June 7th through June 9th, 2013, for which the county will be compensated $3,500 and will retain all revenues generated through food and beverage sales. Good morning, Commissioners. Randy Luby, Parks and Recreation. Uh, this is our agreement with the uh, Topeka Swim Association to uh, allow them to use our facility for practices as well as the swim meet June 7th through the 9th. Uh, they will compensate us $3,500. Uh, we expect to uh, generate um, a very much increase in the normal amount of revenue that we take in for concessions during that time. Um, so I feel it's pretty much a wash for that one weekend. Um, this event does attract over 550 um, athletes and families from out of town to um, participate in Topeka and Shawnee County. Be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Randy. I have no questions. Move to approve. This motion to approve. By Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank Thanks, you, Randy. Commissioner. Item H2, consider approval to pay invoice in an amount of $16,248.13 to Chevron Energy Solutions, which monitors the heating and cooling systems in the courthouse. Good morning, Commissioner. Terry Bertles, Parks and Recreation. Um, in 2007, the county entered into an agreement with Chevron Energy Solutions <coughs> that, among other things, uh, provided a... Um, for a dramatic improvement and uh, uh, overhaul of the heating and cooling systems in, in the courthouse. Uh, as part of that agreement, the county entered into a separate agreement with Chevron to provide monitoring services for the, the system to uh, provide us with the information that we need to, to make good judgments on um, how we should be setting up the system, as well as point out any, any deficiencies or uh, trends that are showing up that might affect our, our energy uh, savings in a negative way. We get an ad, or a, a monthly report from Chevron that details our system and exactly that, you know, where, how, how it's operating within the framework of, that was set up as part of the agreement and, and where areas are that, um, that aren't working within that framework. It's been especially um, valuable with uh, the change in, in our building maintenance staff to allow our new staff some time to get their feet under them and understand the system better. Uh, so with that, I would recommend that we, uh, we pay this invoice to Chevron Energy Solutions. Thank you, Chair. I'll make a motion to approve then. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye, opposed no. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you, Thanks, Chair. Item H3, consider approval of recommendation regarding Crestview Pool. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Um, as you, uh, this item before you is uh, our recommendation and also a notification to the public that the Crestview Pool will not be able to be used for this summer. Um, following the close of the pool last year, Terry Bertles and uh, the Park Director and also with some uh, individuals from Larkin Aquatics 
Uh, once we received our last water bill that was an uh, enormous amount of usage, uh, we did some investigation and found that uh, uh, there were some severe deficiencies in the pool. And uh, uh, at that time, we, we did a report, uh, compiled a report what it would cost to either repair the, repool, uh, repair the pool or uh, uh, in, in what, what all different kind of options we might have. Um, with that being said, there was some, uh, some language. I, d I don't know if the commissioners got any of these, but there was some, somebody was using the phrase $48,000 to repair the pool. I don't know where that $48,000 came from. I've tried my best to figure out where that might have came from. The uh, estimates for repairing the pool, uh, and that's just to repair the leaking problem that we have. It does not uh, address the ADA concerns and several other concerns that we have with the pool. It's somewhere between $650,000 and $800,000. With that being said, I do. Uh, I know Terry Bertels is here too, and might be able to uh, shed some light on some of that. I'd be happy to answer any questions the county commissioners might have. Uh, I've had some correspondence on this issue. Obviously, um, one of the questions that people have asked me is, why did we build in the floodplain in the first place? And I assume it's because. It wasn't in the floodplain. It, it was the reconfiguring of the floodplain a couple of years ago is what put it in the floodplain at this point. Is that correct? I, I would say that's correct. It was built in 1958. I wasn't even born at that time yet, uh, so I can't tell you what all went into the... Uh, uh, I, and, and as I talked to you guys before the meeting, I have other issues with the Crestview Pool as I grew up in that area and grew up there. I won't go into those. But, uh, uh, I assume that it was, uh, and, and maybe Terry has some information on that. If he does, he's moving up this way, so apparently he does. Well, I would only confirm what, what you said, Mr. Archer, that it was not in the floodplain. Um, it, it was moved into the floodplain like so many of the properties were in Topeka when, the, when FEMA redrew the flood maps a couple of years ago. And, and I want to elaborate on that just a little bit by saying um, some new information, or, or new to me anyway, it's not only in the flood plain, it's in the flood way, which means that it's, it's in uh, the active, uh, strong current portion of, of, of a 100-year flood. It's not incidental water that's kind of lapping up into it. It's, it'll be five feet plus deep um, with a strong current going along with it. There is a distinct difference between floodway and floodplain. But, but Terry, you can build in a, a floodplain, and you can build in a floodway. You have to meet certain requirements, which, uh, you know, I mean, I live in a floodplain, and right. uh, so I mean, you can build. You can. You have to build to uh, to the requirements. To specifications, for, uh, yeah. For FEMA. Yeah. Um, yes. But but no determination has been made on whether this pool is going to be in this current location or another location. All that is. It's so preliminary. There's, there's been no decision. No decision. Okay. A question I had. If we go back historically, before the consolidation of the Parks and Recreation Department with the City of Topeka, this pool had already been evaluated for a replacement, correct? Correct. So this closure shouldn't come as a complete surprise. I would think not. It was in the capital improvement program for the city of Topeka, and I can't remember what year it was scheduled to be replaced, or at least discussed to be replaced, but it was in yeah. CIP. And I think 2014 was That's right. the information. Um, have we started doing any studies as to what might replace, or if we what we want to, if the community had had input? Um, I, I think that's where uh, John and I have had dis some discussions about where do we go from here. Um, you know, we have the fortunate opportunity of having a master plan being developed for our department here soon. Um, as part of that master plan, we'll be meeting with the general public on numerous occasions to gather their input. Um, it provides us with an excellent opportunity to, to get input from the public and, and has, as part of that master plan, how do we move forward with our aquatics program with the department. Okay. Another question that I have, and this is for Mr. Knight. Uh, <coughs> like Commissioner Archer and I'm sure Commissioner Bueller, I've had correspondence <coughs> with constituents regarding the closing of the pool, but I've also had correspondence and communications with my wife who said, your children go to the Passport Adventure Camp, which is at Crestview. They swim at that pool during the summer camp. Where are your children going to swim now? 
<laughs> so, to follow up, my constituent, well, there you go. <laughs> where are the children that go to the passport to adventure camp going to swim? I'll, uh, I'll let Randy uh, uh, fill any holes that I leave out. But uh, recreation staff, the people who run the passport for adventure camp, the, the primary person that's in charge of that is Lynn Bishop. She works right there in the community center. She did not have to do much more than walk out the back door and take a look and know that they were probably going to have to come up with another solution for swimming. I know that they've made several arrangements to go to Blaisdell Pool, the Shawnee North Pool, several other uh, things to, to completely fill their camp. So. Okay. so the camps should not be impacted by the closing of the pool? No, in fact, uh, what, what, uh, they may, may find that they like the variety and going to different pools and different aquatic facilities, and uh, the, our, our operational costs of those camps may go up a little bit as we have to transport them to there. So. What's, what's the attendance at that pool during the summer, I can ask you? And, and what's the, clo the next closest public um, pool? I, I didn't bring those numbers. I did ask staff yesterday. We had a hard time getting numbers from prior to the merger, but in 2011, we had just over 10,000, and then last year we had uh, eight or 9,000. Okay. Commissioner Archer. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I may uh, <laughs> caution Commissioner Cook uh, about listening to his wife. I know I've done that. <laughs> I've done that in the past, and it's gotten me in a lot of trouble. Um, having said that, uh, <laughs> having said that, I want to say that Crestview Pool is near and dear to me. Uh, I remember fighting for it on the city council when some people wanted to make it into a spray park. I didn't like that idea. Kids need to learn to swim. They need a pool to do that. Uh, I am going to support the recommendation. I've lost a lot of sleep over this one, like some other issues. But I have to make decisions based on facts. And the facts tell me that it's not viable to build a pool in a floodplain. And the facts tell me it's not smart to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a pool in a floodplain. But Terry Burles brought up the question, where do we go from here? And I think that's critical. Uh, and it's critical that we have an aquatic center in southwest Topeka. Uh, my dream is actually to have uh, a venue that's comparable to Shawnee North Aquatic Center, as we, we've discussed. At this time, I don't know that that's possible, uh, but that would be my dream. I want to work with Parks and Rec to make sure that we have an aquatic center in southwest Topeka. So, having said that, I'll make a motion to approve. Commissioner Kessler, go ahead. I will second, but I have a question for our legal counsel. Ms. Record, as we uh, look at the closure of the Crestview Pool, I want to make sure that we're in compliance with our agreement with the City of Topeka as it related to the consolidation. Do we have to provide the City of Topeka any notice of the close of the pool, or do we have the unilateral authority to close pools, and ultimately if we decide to close a park in the upcoming months or years, what notice do we have to provide to the City of Topeka? And the second part is, does our Parks and Rec Director have the ability to just make the decision and then we're approving his decision, or does it have to be a motion from the commission to close a park or pool? Objection, compound question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lawyer view. Um, going in reverse order, we would feel comfortable if you made that decision. Uh, I don't think you let, I don't think historically the commission has let the Parks and Rec director, no matter who it's been, make decisions like that when it comes to closing facilities. So I'm going to suggest that you do need to do that. With respect to the City of Topeka, what the agreement provides is that if we're going to take a piece of land that they merged with us and use it for non park and rec purposes, then we have to offer that land mm -hmm. back to the city of Topeka. So, again, breaking your question up into the two parts, if we were going to close a park and not use it for parks and rec, yes, notice to the city of Topeka and an offer to deliver the land back to them. However, the closing of a pool doesn't mean that that park is no longer going to be used as a park. So I'm going to make a distinction there in saying that that's just infrastructure maintenance or infrastructure uh, uh, 
things that we have to do, that's not going to trigger that notice requirement. Because Crestview Park is not going away. It's still going to be used. The softball complex will still be used. The uh, uh, building there will still be used for parks and rec purposes. So, no, that's not going to trigger that part of the contract. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Any other questions? Um, John, I had a follow-up question for you. I, I guess I'm a little concerned. I don't want to give the impression to the public that it's just for this season. Um, because the fact of the matter is that in order to replace a pool to build uh, it takes a, a good deal of time. Um, I mean, you know, we're going through the master plan and, and that sort of thing. The master plan should take between 9 and 12 months. Right. After the contract is signed, uh, I am still negotiating the contract with the, uh, with, with the potential uh, contractors. Uh, after that, uh, then there would be uh, significant studies, architectural drawing. Right. It might be uh, several years before a pool exactly. could be built. It was, I think, two and a half for the Rossville pool. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, about two for the Garfield pool, I think, when the, the city replaced them. Mm -hmm. so. I, I just don't want to give the impression that it's just for this season. I mean, we're, we're talking yeah. about a, an extended amount of time. Okay. Right, further comments or questions? There Go may ahead. be comments from the... Good point. Anyone have additional comments? Yeah, I hate to do this as well. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Next item, please. Item H4, consider authorization and execution of contract C225-2013 with USD 501 for use of the Hummer Sports Park on September 28th and 29th, 2013 for the 2013 Senior Olympics at a cost of $2,800 to the county with the intent that the program user fees will cover the cost. We have approval of the request. I don't want to give you any opportunity to make any comments. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It's getting too close to budget time. Yeah. Uh, Why are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries 3 to 0. <laughs> And item H5, consider authorization and execution of contract C226-2013 with the select photographics for photography services for the youth athletic uh, leagues with compensation of, of $7,000 to $8,000 to Shawnee County. Good morning, commissioners. Um, we went out, or you gave us permission to go out for um, RFQs uh, for this service on February 14th, select... Um, Photo Graphics was the only vendor to uh, to put in a, a proposal, which was disappointing because I had received four or five phone calls prior. That was the reason we went out for it. Um, but uh, they were the only ones, and we were very pleased with their service last year. I was just opening it up to give somebody else a chance if they wanted. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. They were the only ones to submit a bid. That su submitted a... Uh, RFQ, yes. Okay. Motion to approve the contract. Motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you, Commissioner. Item H6, consider approval of the 2012 annual report for Shawnee County Parks and Recreation Department. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Uh, what you have this morning is uh, uh, the uh, annual report for 2012. Uh, it's uh, especially significant because it's the first year of the merged department. Uh, it goes through several different uh, uh, areas. It doesn't go into a great amount of the specific detail, but it does touch on several topics. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have, but it does talk about uh, financial uh, impact of the the county. You have a brief uh, inter, or a brief overview of uh, several of the departments as well as some of the work that the foundation was able to accomplish last year. be happy to answer any other questions you might have. I have a question for, and this is for the commissioners. When we have, this is the first annual report that I know that we've come across and as a new commission member, do we approve the report or do we acknowledge receipt of the report? And maybe the Madam Clerk might have Normal, on something, something like this, it's normally acknowledge receipt. Yeah. I, I would move to acknowledge receipt of the annual report. 
I'll second, but I do have a, a question for, for John. What is the distribution strategy for the uh, report, John? Uh, we, we will take this. Uh, we'll also, I have, next Wednesday, I have a Shawnee County Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting that's televised. We'll uh, discuss some of the uh, contents of that during that meeting. Uh, we'll also distribute that to uh, many of the different user groups, and there are, would be available <coughs> online as well. Thank you. All those in you may motion and Commissioner Archer second. All in favor of the motion say aye, opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item I, Commission number one, consider approval of resolution number 2013-36 appointing Mark Hickson as the county appraiser for four years beginning July 1, 2013. Mark, do you want to make any comments at all? Or no? I'll make a motion to approve. I will second. <laughs> motion by Commissioner Archer. <coughs> second by Commissioner Keck. All in favor of the motion say aye. Those now motion carries three to zero. Item I <laughs> Item I two, consider canceling the May 9th and June seventeenth commission meetings. Move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item five, administrative communications. Any administrative communications? A special welcome to Jeff Sender. He's uh, used to be in the uh, media role, but he's here on behalf of Seaman School District. So welcome. And I think we do have a participant from the Greater Topeka Leadership Class. Two. Good. Sorry, I didn't see you back there. So welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? No? All right. Next item, please. Item six, executive sessions. Is there a need? Not. We are adjourned. Oh, Tom, did you have anything? Sorry. Okay. You were getting up, but okay. <laughs> we're adjourned. Thank you.